Hello, I'm Chris Eberly, Director of the Maryland Bird Conservation Partnership. I'm so glad you stopped by to see my poster. The mission of the Maryland Bird Conservation Partnership focuses on native wild bird populations and habitats, partnerships with public and private organizations, and engaging communities. We envision a Maryland landscape that is healthy and sustainable for not just birds, but also for communities and those who live in them. We like to say that what we do is connecting birds, habitats, and people throughout Maryland. So why are we needed? Well, let's take a look at, at some of the reasons. Did you know that more than 25% of birds have disappeared since 1970. That includes a drop of 32% of aerial insectivores, which include these species listed here. Uh, surprisingly, barn swallow has dropped 40% in the last 50 years. Common nighthawk, chimney swifts are all not doing well. As a whole, Long-distance migratory birds, such as Baltimore Oriole, are the bulk of the disappearing birds, about 80%. And spring migration mass has been reduced by 14% just in the past decade. However, news, the news is not all bad. Raptors have gained about 15 million in their population since 1970, thanks to conservation efforts. One of the most significant uh, of these efforts is the elimination of DDT. So what is it that's killing our birds? Uh, here's a chart from a paper done six years ago, and these are um, described as conservative estimates. Uh, for instance, windows probably kill in excess of one billion uh, birds, and cats likely um, are responsible for more than three billion deaths. The Maryland Bird Conservation Partnership wants to secure Maryland's wild bird populations into the future. We do this through monitoring programs and project initiatives. I will be touching on these in this poster. The Bald Eagle Nest Monitoring Program is our biggest community science monitoring program with more than 200 volunteer nest monitors registered. Currently, we have about 440 nests documented. This map shows the extent of these nests. The nests uh, identified by uh, a check within a green circle are assigned to one of our volunteer nest monitors. The orange circle with a question mark, those are not currently assigned and they might just be waiting for you. The important, area, important Bird Areas program is a collaborative effort with Audubon, Maryland, DC. The uh, objectives of this program are to identify the areas most essential for sustaining native bird populations, monitor those sites for changes to bird and habitats, and conserve these areas for long-term protection of bird populations. We're also engaged in county, state, and national level monitoring efforts. We currently have a contract with Cecil County as part of their green infrastructure plan to monitor three county properties uh, to help with um, corridor connections for uh, forested habitat. We partner with Maryland DNR to promote the Summer Wild Turkey Survey. And at a national level, national level we help coordinate uh, the um, NYCHAR survey network that is run by the Center of Conservation Biology at the College of William and Mary, and the Sand Hill Crane uh, Fall Survey that is done by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. If you're not already participating in the third Breeding Bird Atlas, please stop by Gabriel Foley's poster to learn more. The partnership is helping with special surveys for species that are not captured well by regular atlasing. And these will be conducted as separate efforts and then combined in with the atlasing. We started the Maryland Bird Observatory Network a few years back. 
with the objectives to facilitate communication amongst the different banding stations within the state, uh, coordinate research and monitoring priorities, and such, such as if there is a certain uh, research project that requires a specific type of um, monitoring, including banding, we can notify these um, banding stations to participate, promote some academic research partnerships, and to establish a statewide system of collecting, analyzing, and curating uh, the data that is uh, generated by these stations. Currently, we have Foreman's Branch Bird Observatory, and that photo in the lower right corner is their 300,000th bird that they captured last October 2020, a white-throated sparrow who does not look overly thrilled at the distinction. We also work with Jug Bay Bird Observatory and the uh, Maryland Coastal Bird Observatory, which is in its startup. We recruited Smokey Bear and adjusted his tool just a bit to help us launch the Farmland Raptor and Chimney Swift Conservation programs. This is a photo of a Howard County farm that shows good habitat potential for farmland raptors. Our program focuses on American kestrels and barn owls, but we also include wintering northern har harriers and short-eared owls. Now, I do need to note that harriers do nest in Maryland, not in large numbers, and primarily in the lower eastern shore marshes. The American kestrel is a species of greatest conservation need in 12 of the 14 northeast states. And you can see the red uh, indicates regions with declining populations. The only region not with declining populations is the southeast, which a large, large part of that is the resident um, southeastern kestrel species. And to look at changes from the first to the second breeding bird atlas, you can see all the red triangles that indicate blocks that had evidence of breeding in the first atlas and, and in the second atlas did not. So you can see that we have lost a lot of uh, kestrel breeding areas. And if you notice where these areas are, you can pretty much tell it's where a lot of uh, urbanization is taking place. And here's just showing the numbers to go with uh, that graphic. Uh, an overall change of a uh, decline of 31% fewer uh, atlas blocks. Barn owls globally are doing pretty well. And you can see that in the US, the threats to the, the breeding and non-breeding habitat um, at the top graph there in the blue uh, are moderate and in the, uh, the tan color um, population trend or the population yeah, trend uh, is overall positive. However, the north, in the Northeast and Midwest, barn owls are in decline. So the Maryland Farmland Raptor Program uh, seeks to stabilize and begin to increase farmland raptor populations in Maryland. The recovery objectives are to assess the population, um, which would be monitoring nest box productivity, using eBird to enter sightings, uh, random sightings, um, identifying and protecting and then restoring critical habitats, increase the availability of nest sites, um, primarily trying to ensure that there's a supply of natural cavities. Um, abandoned buildings and barns are also uh, good, and uh, we should try to save those where they're not a hazard. And then to supplement these with nest boxes where appropriate. And then a large part of this is the public awareness component where we're gonna target private landowners and farmers. The Chimney Swift Conservation Program has a similar goal, 
to uh, stabilize and begin to increase chimney swift populations in Maryland. Uh, similar recovery goal objectives to the farmland raptor program. In the case of chimney swifts, uh, increasing the availability of nest sites includes chimneys, which seem to be their primary um, nest structure of choice, nesting habitat of choice, and where appropriate, we will look to um, construct chimney swift towers in appropriate areas. We also do what we can to help share research successes and research conservation needs. We started the Maryland Bird Conservation Symposium in January of 2019 and held our second one in uh, 2020 in January. And this is really the, the only symposium in Maryland that brings together avian research, conservation, uh, and public uh, together to share what's going on and what is needed. Maryland Bird Conservation Partnership was one of the founding partners in a, a new symposium called Frontiers in Ornithology. And this is specifically for youth uh, ages, uh, middle school through college primarily. And this is not a birding symposium, but rather this is something to educate and inspire youth to take their passion for birds to a higher level. We like to do that by encouraging opportunities in ornithology, conservation science, and other related academic and professional pursuits. And finally, our Bird City Maryland program helps to make communities in Maryland healthier for birds and for people. Bird cities support activities that benefit birds, such as creating habitat for birds, uh, including nesting structures like this one. Uh, it's actually from a program in Virginia for American kestrels. They also uh, support activities to reduce threats to birds, such as bird proofing windows and keeping cats indoors. And this is a nice catio uh, enclosure that are becoming more popular. Keeping your cat indoors not only protects birds, but it actually improves the health of your cat. And finally, if you uh, buy uh, bird-friendly coffee, you are helping to support the, uh, all of our long-distance migrant birds when they're in the tropics, which is actually about seven months out of every year that they're there. There are seven simple actions to help birds uh, that was created out uh, from that, um, the paper that I showed at the beginning with the, the various declines of, of bird species. And all of these actions uh, are done within bird cities, but they're, they're designed for anyone and everyone to do. They're simple things, little things, but if everybody picks, chips in a little bit, it will make a huge difference for birds. You can help. Thanks for stopping by and listening to this virtual poster. Here's my contact information. If you have questions, I'm very happy to answer those and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.